Hello and welcome. Today we are doing question number one on LeetCode, the most popular question. It is called to sum. We are going to jump right into it. Given an array of integers, nums, and an integer target, return indices of the two numbers such that they add up to target. You may assume that each input would have exactly one solution, and you may not use the same element twice. You can return the answer in any order. So we want to find two numbers when summed up equal target and return the indices of those two numbers. So example one, we have 2, 7, 11, and 15. Target is 9. So what two numbers give us 9? That would be 2 and 7. And remember, arrays are zero indexed. So instead of starting 1, 2, 3, 4, we actually start 0, 1, 2, 3. And which is why we will return 0, 1 or 1, 0 because order wouldn't matter. Example 2, we have 3, 2, 4, target 6. Here we output 1, 2 because at those indices at 1 and 2, we have 2, 4. When added up, give us the target 6. And example 3, we have 3, 3, target is 6, and we output indices 0, 1. We have some constraints over here. We're guaranteed that we'll have at least two numbers in our input nums. We have a range for every single number in nums as well as target and only one valid answer exists. So we're guaranteed an answer and only one. Follow up. Can you come up with an algorithm that is less than O of N squared time complexity? Well, first, what is N squared time complexity? And if you're unfamiliar with time complexity and O of N annotation, all it means is we're setting a variable N to represent the length of our input nums. So let's say a nums has N elements. And n squared usually means we're going to have two loops, which means for every single element in nums, we're going to be going through nums that many times. So that's n into n or n squared. And if you have any questions with this, let me know down below. I will answer every single question I see. So feel free to drop a question. But this n squared actually segues into our first approach because before coming up with an algorithm that is less than it, let's actually come up with an algorithm that is n squared and get better from there. So for our n squared algorithm, we are basically going to be going through all of nums and making all possible pairs with our numbers. If any pair equals target, then we'll just return the indices of that pair. So say I had the following example. I have the following input nums and target four. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna be looping through making all my pairs. So if I start, with my first loop, I will have my first number. So say I have four. Well, now I want to pair four up with all my other numbers. So I'll do four with seven, four with negative one, four with three, and four with five. And now I want to use seven and make all possible pairs. So with seven, I will pair this up with negative one. I don't need to pair it up with four again because four and seven were already covered. I don't want to do any duplicates. So then I will go ahead and pair seven with three and seven with five. And basically, I'll just be doing that for every single element in my array. Once I get to negative one, I'll pair this up with three. Then I will pair negative one up with five. And at this point, I see that this actually sums up to target. So I'll return the indices of these two numbers. So that's what our solution is gonna be. Let's go ahead and code this up. So in the beginning, I'm going to have one loop that goes through the entire length of nums. So for, for index one in range of length of nums, I'm going through my entire input. Now I'm gonna have my second loop because I wanna pair that first number up with something. So for index two in range, and here I'm going to do index one plus one because we don't want any repeats, right? We can just start pairing from the number after us. So index one plus one until the end of the array. So length of nums. And I'm going to check if the numbers at those two indices sum up to target. So if nums at index one plus nums of index two, equals equals target at that point all i do is i return the two indices so index one and index two and i want to return this in list form since that's what we're doing in this output so let's go ahead and actually run this code 
runtime error. Let's see what happened here. So in two is not defined. This should be index two. There we go. Rerun this. It's accepted and we can go ahead and submit. And it is accepted as well. Before going through our second approach, let's just run through a quick example just to see what our code is doing line by line. So let's say we had this example right here. I'm going to delete this. Going through it really quickly, I have index one that's going to loop through all of num. So index one starts out at index zero. And index two is going to be starting at one. So equals one until the end. So zero and one, we are basically over here. So this is one. This is my second number right here. Now I add these together. So four plus seven, because those are the numbers at those indices, that equals 11. It's not equivalent to my target, which is four. So I never go into this if statement and I never return, which means I am back in this for loop. And now index two is going to be two. So I bump this down over here. I check the numbers again, four plus negative one, not equal to target. So then I go back into this loop, move this to three and do the same thing. This is not equivalent to target. I go in here, move it down. This is now at five. So four plus five is nine. We don't go into this and we're actually done with this second for loop right here. So we're going to go back into our first and move this to be one. So now we're done with four. We're going to go into sevens. Now over here, we start off with index one plus one. So this is at one, which means our second number will start right after this, right? We don't want to repeat any pairs. We're just going to start right after this. So this means we are at index two. Seven plus negative one is six, which is not four. We don't go into this if statement and we don't return. We're back into the for loop. We move this down over here. Seven plus three, not four. We go back into the for loop, move this down. Seven plus five, again, not equal to it. So we are done with the second for loop. We are back into the first. We move this to two. This is over here. And we start off at index three for our second number. Three plus negative one is two. It's not four, so we don't go into this. And we go back into the for loop, move this down to four. Now, the numbers at these indices, so we have negative one and five. This does equal four when added together. So all we do is we return our indices. So we return two comma four, and that is our answer. We just saw this whole thing play out. And now let's see how we're gonna do better than n squared. So to do better than n squared, we're gonna be making use of something called a hash map or a dictionary. And what that is, is a collection of key value pairs that allows for constant time insertion and lookup. So how do we make use of that? What we're going to do is iterate through our input nums and keep track of every number we've seen and the index we've seen it on. For example, if I have my input right here, what I'm going to do is, of course, I start in the beginning. So I start at four. I'm going to go ahead and add this to my dictionary and it's at index zero. So I will add that as a corresponding value. So now when I iterate through, I come to seven. Instead of making pairs and seeing if they sum up to my target, at this point, I already know what I want to be looking for. My number is seven and target is four. I want to be looking for a negative three. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check if negative three exists in the dictionary. It does not. So what do I do now? Now what I'm going to do is add my number and index into the dictionary in case I come across a number that can later be used with me to pair up and get target. So what I'm going to do is add seven and its corresponding index one to my dictionary and continue moving down. So now I come across negative one. I know what I want to be looking for. I want to be looking for target minus my number. If it's in my dictionary, I will return my own index as well as the index that corresponds with that number. And if it's not in the dictionary, I will add my number in as well as the index that I am on. And that is it. So let's go ahead and code this up and then actually run through this whole example step by step. So the first thing I'm going to do is loop through. So for index in range length of nums. And of course, I want a dictionary. So let's call this all the numbers I have seen. And we're going to initialize it before we get into our loop. So for index in range length of nums, I'm going to set my current number to be nums at index. Now I want to see if target minus my number is in scene. So if 
target minus number in scene, I will return my index, so index, as well as the index of that number in my dictionary. So how do we get that? We want to find the key of the number in scene. So scene of target minus num holds that index. So if that is in scene, all we have to do is return this. Now, say it's not in scene. If we don't go into this if condition, that means we want to add our number into scene. And how do we do that? We take scene, we see what key we want. So that's going to be the number. And we want its value to correspond with the index. So all we do is add our key value pair into scene. So scene of number equals index. Now we can go ahead and run this code. It is accepted and we can go ahead and submit this. And it is accepted as well. So let's just quickly run through this line by line and we can see how much faster this solution is compared to the other one we had. So we have a scene and we are looping through our entire input nums. So we have index, which is going to start off at zero. So I have index that starts off right here. Now I set num to be nums of that index. So right now it is four. Now if target minus num in scene, nothing is actually in scene. So we'll never go into this if condition, which means we are over here. We set scene of num equal to index. So scene of num, which is four. And we set this equal to our index, which is zero. Now we are back in this loop. So index is one and our number is seven. So index is over here. Number is seven and we check target minus number. So four minus seven, that's negative three. Is that in scene? It is not. So we go ahead and add our number and index to the dictionary. So seven and the index, which is one. We are back in this for loop, which means index is now moved up over here. And we set number to be negative one. Target minus number. So target minus negative one. So four minus negative one is five. It's not in scene and we can add our pair in there. So we are going to go ahead and add in negative one and two. We go back into this for loop. We move this down. We have index three and number is also three. Target minus number. So four minus three is one. It's not in here. We go ahead and add this here. And finally, we move all the way down. So index is four. The number is five. Now target minus number. So four minus five is negative one and negative one is in our dictionary. So what do we do now is we return index, which is our current index. So we return four comma. What is the value of target minus num in scene? So target is four. Our number is five. So four minus five is negative one. What does negative one hold in scene? That is two. So these are our two indices in a return for this problem. And as you can see, we did better in time. We only went through the entire array once as opposed to n squared. So we went down from n squared to O of n for time, but there's always this space time trade off. So before we didn't use any space, it was constant O of one. Now our space has increased to be O of n because our dictionary could theoretically be as big as our input nums. So our time is better because it's O of n, but we also make use of space O of n. So we just went ahead and solved two sum. If you have any questions at all, let me know down below. Otherwise, I will see you next time.